What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is an exciting day, man. We're finally going to get to assemble in the bottom end of this Banshee motor. Now I have all my new parts laid out in front of me, really just because I think it looks cool. And, um, you know, we're not going to be assembling all this stuff today, which is really sad. I know it's pretty sad, but regardless, we're going to do some assembling today. What I plan on doing is throwing the crank in our lower, our bottom end, throwing our transmission in there, sealing up the cases, and uh, we might even get to the top end today, and then we'll kind of keep it, you know, clustered together like that, and then we'll most likely do the stator side and the clutch side in another video. So for today, that's what we're going to be doing. We're not, like I said, we're not going to be installing all this stuff. So what I'm going to do is remove the stuff that we're not going to be working with today. I'll get the transmission up here, and I want to go over the lubricants and stuff that I'm using before I get started, and then we'll get to assembling this bottom end. Alright guys, so as you can see I've taken away some parts as well as added some parts. You can see I have my transmission here, I've got our reeds, and I have our bolts over here for our cases. Now before I get started I want to go over some of the fluids that we're going to be using in this build. So first and foremost we have Beanol. This is the traditional two-stroke oil. It's made by Klotz. I'm going to use this when I'm lubricating the crank because that's the kind of lubrication that the motor is supposed to get there. For our transmission we're going to be using Klotz as well. And this is Flex Drive 30. It's specifically made for manual transmission fluids. Should be a great fluid. I've never actually run it before, but I've heard nothing but good stuff about it. Now we also have Yumbon 6B. I'm gonna be using that to seal our intake. And I also have Permatex Anaerobic Gasket Maker. That's what I used the last time I put my cases together and it really worked great. So I'm gonna stay consistent with that and use that again. And of course we have a lithium based assembly lube. And this right here is some anti-seize. I'm going to be using this on our case bolts. You know, I have stainless steel bolts going into an aluminum case, and uh, that they tend to bind up after being in there for a while, and especially after the cases have been vapor blasted. DBC Racing had advised me to put a little bit of anti-seize on my case bolts, so that's what that's going to be for. All right, guys, so let's clean this off and get our bottom end together. All right, so I have everything set up here pretty much in the most organized way that I can. I have my oil set out here, my lubricants, I took my bean oil and put it in this mustard container. Makes it really easy to apply. And uh, got my transmission all set. So without further ado, let's get that thing put in there. Now the order of procedure that the manual has is crankshaft then transmission. Of course, both of these components are not even connected until the clutch side of the motor is together. So it really doesn't matter which one you do first. So I prefer to do the transmission first. So the first thing I'm gonna do is throw our shift cam in and our shift forks. All right, let's get to it. First things first, we're gonna put our shift cam in. Can only go one way. Shift star faces outward. Now before I put it in, I'm just gonna put a little bit of this flex drive 30 or whatever transmission fluid you're using on this outside here. Just a thin film, because we don't want it to be dry when we fire the motor up. Now we're gonna put in our shift forks and our guide bars. Now if you got these things mixed up, it's no big deal. It's pretty simple. These are numbered, your shift forks, and I'll show you. See on the inside here, it says number one, right there. On this side it says 2GU. You have two forks that say number one. So you have a shorter guide bar and a longer guide bar. This one's longer with one with the two shift forks. The shorter guide bar goes in the front. You're gonna slide that in. Make sure that you have your area where your C-clip goes facing inward. So we're going to slide that in, hook on our fork, make sure that this little drum area is facing towards your shift cam because that, that's what rides in these grooves. So we're going to go ahead and put this first guide bar in. And the fork in the front portion goes in the middle groove of your shift cam. You don't want to force it. All right, so that one's in there. The other shift forks, you can see this one is labeled number two. And then we have another number one 
They go in order, one, two, and just like with the other fork, you want to make sure these little areas that protrude are facing towards your shift cam. So we're going to take number one first, and we'll slide our guide pin in. And remember, keeping this slot facing inward. So our first fork is on. Then we'll take number two, if you guys can see that. And remember guys, don't force anything. It's all a matter of lining things up. Once it's lined up, it'll go in nice and easy. Now once you have all these forks in there, it's a good idea to spin your camshaft and make sure that everything moves nice and freely. Now I'm gonna take our little C-clips and clip them on. I like to do this before I put the retaining bolts on here because it's difficult to get these on when they're right up against the case. So before you put that on, you can pull these out just a little bit so it's easier to get on your clips. Now we're going to go to the side of the case and we're going to bolt on our lock washer. I'm just going to snug this down. Now I'm going to put my cam stopper plate on. Got to make sure your cam is lined up properly. Then we'll slide this in. There we go. I'm going to take a little bit of blue Loctite on these. I'm going to give these a couple quick zaps with the impact gun to make sure they're nice and tight. All right, so now we're going to drop our gears in. First thing we're going to do is put our circlips in. You have a big circlip that goes over here. You want to be certain that it goes in that groove. Then we have a smaller circlip. It's going to go over here. Same thing, make sure it goes all the way in that groove. Now we're going to drop our trans in. I've got a new seal on the left side of the motor. You just got to get your forks to line up or right side of the motor actually from this point of view. Now for the other half of our transmission. Make sure everything works nice and smooth. And make sure that your clips are in the grooves because the last thing you want to do is bolt your cases down and these things aren't in the grooves and you wind up snapping your cases. All right, so the transmission is in there. Pretty easy task. You can see I got some oil on there already. You wanna make sure these things are lubed up so they're not dry on your first start. Now before I drop my crank in, I'm gonna go ahead and put some anaerobic gasket maker on my cases. This stuff works great. I used it last time. Some of you guys might say I need the activator to make this stuff work, which if you read the back, I'm not gonna go through that stuff, but it does say that there's an activator that you can spray um, on one end of the cases, it's supposed to help this stuff cure a little bit quicker. It will cure on its own without the activator. And uh, that's how I did it last time without the activator and it cured just fine. I had no leaks at all. So I'm going to do it the same way that I did last time. Now the reason I'm doing it before I put the crank in is because I want to put a thin layer of this anaerobic gasket maker where the two crank seals go. Now in the manual, it doesn't suggest that you do that, but it's the way I did it last time and it's the way that I see South Texas Banshee does it. That's really the uh, direction I took the first time I assembled this motor. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it the same way I did last time because it worked out well, had no leaks. So why not, you know, don't fix it if it's not broken. So that's the method I'm gonna use this time. So I'm gonna go ahead, spread on this gasket maker and then we'll drop our crank in. Now before we drop the crank in, we want to put our crankshaft seals on. So you have a smaller seal here 
and the larger seal here. Now the larger seal goes with the metal portion facing outward and if your seal doesn't have a metal portion look for these raised portions. They always face inward towards the crank and you can tell on this bearing or uh, seal as well. See this side is smooth. If you look in here you can see those little raised portions on the inside of the seal. Just like the other side of the seal they both face inward. So I'm going to go ahead and put some assembly lube on the inside of both of these seals and then we're going to drop the uh, crank in there. Now this seal on the left is going to be a floating seal until uh, it's put in the crankshaft because you'll see it's, uh, it's too big on here. The primary drive gear is going to fit inside here. So you just kind of have to hold it in place and slide it into the little grooves in the uh, case. So it's really not too difficult. We'll go ahead and drop it in there. And of course, guys, don't forget to put this sir clip on before you drop your, your crank in. All right, now that crank dropped in really easy. Something to note though, make sure if you're using an OEM crank, you're gonna have these little pins. Here's an OEM crank right here. You see them right here? These pins, if you roll the bearings around, there's the other one. You have them on the sides too. See it? Now those pins need to line up in these little cutouts. So, my aftermarket crank doesn't have those, depends on what kind of crank you're putting in there. But that's just something I wanted to point out. Because if you don't have those pins lined up and you tighten your cases down, you know, you're going to be in a world of hurt. I'm just going to put a little bit of this bean oil two-stroke oil in our bearings. Also guys, don't forget to put in this shift arm. Now I'm going to start throwing some bolts in. Throw a little anti-seize on them first. All right, so I got my cases together. These things look freaking awesome. You can see the anaerobic gasket maker oozing out of the side of the motor. Shouldn't be too much coming out if you put just a thin coat on. And for those of you guys that follow my Instagram page, it is not Concord grape jelly that I put in there. <laughs> it is anaerobic gasket maker by Permatex. Some of you guys were making fun of me the first time I did this asking if I put jelly on there, so I thought I'd put that up. Now when you are doing this, remember to go back and forth on the top side and the underside, slowly snugging in these bolts. You want to go in a crisscross pattern and just kind of bring them all snug until the cases are nice and tight, and then you want to torque them down. I went to the manual specs, which the manual quotes 7.2 foot-pounds for the top. I went to 8 foot-pounds, and on the nuts on the bottom, you're supposed to go to 18 foot-pounds, so I did that with mine. So just like I said, remember, switch back and forth, slowly bring it down. It doesn't have to be the exact pattern that they have quoted in the manual, but, you know, use common sense, use a crisscross pattern, and that way you won't warp your cases or do anything like that. And you may have noticed my number 12 bolt is missing. That's no big deal. I misplaced it, so I'm not going to let that hold back this pro project. All the other bolts are torqued to spec. I don't think that one bolt's going to make a difference for right now. I'm not going to not put it in. I'm just going to put it in later when I find it. So let's get moving along. I want to put the cylinders and pistons on. But before I do that, I'm just going to wipe down all the excess anaerobic gasket maker. That stuff's nice because it only dries in the absence of air. So it gives you a lot of time to play with it. And when the stuff is hanging out the edge, 
gives you a lot of time to wipe it off and make it nice and clean. All right guys, our bottom end is looking great. So it's time to get the top end on. Let's start off with the pistons. All right guys, I'm gonna do the best I can here to give you clear visible images so that you guys can understand exactly what I'm doing. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is check the ring gap on our piston rings. And what our ring gap is, is this gap right here at the end of either of our piston, piston rings when the piston is, or when this ring is compressed. Now, the way to check that is fairly easy. And just a note real quick, if you see this little N here, whatever side of your piston ring has the manufacturer markings is the top of the ring. So you can see this side doesn't have anything. So that's the bottom. And that little N indicates this is the top of the ring. But regardless, we're going to take our ring and put it in our cylinder. And before I go sliding that in, I'm going to put the piston in. This is going to help us square up that ring. I'll show you what I mean in a second here. So I'm just going to gently slide this piston in. Okay. Now I'm going to take the ring and compress it and fit it in our cylinder. Okay, so now the ring is in there, but you want to make sure that it's nice and flush. So that's why our piston's in here. So we're going to come up with the piston and just push until that ring is nice and even. All right, so there we go. And now that's our ring gap right there. Hopefully you guys can see that. And what we're going to do is take our feeler gauge now, depending on what you're uh, working on, you're going to have a different ring gap. Now, typically, it if you read uh, most of the instructions that come with pistons, they say it's four thousandths of an inch per inch of the bore. So our bore is about three inches, so we want twelve thousandths. And what you want to do is measure that tiny little gap in between your ring. and it fits. So this ring is good. This one clears. Now I'm not going to measure all of the rest of them right in front of you. I'm going to go ahead and do that. But that's how you measure ring gap. A lot of people think that's a scary thing to do. But when you see how it's done, it's pretty simple. Now we're going to put on our rings. You can see these little dowels. See that little pin there? That's where our ring gaps go. Putting on the rings are very easy. Like I said, the side with the marking is going to go upwards. And the way I like to do it is you take your opening, put it on the inside of that uh, little dowel there, and you kind of walk the clip around and do your best not to scratch up your piston. There you can see where that pin is. When that ring's compressed, it'll be right up against that pin. So now we'll go ahead and put our top ring on. So now let's get these pistons in. I've already put my one clip on the inside because that's the most difficult to get to. Now before I even go ahead, I'm gonna take some shop towels and put it around our crank. We'll do this one first, I'm gonna raise it up. And that's just in case we drop a pin, or a clip rather, into the, uh, 
the crank because if uh, you do that you might be splitting your cases getting that thing out. You can see arrow is facing forward pretty much every make of piston has the arrow really easy to tell if you don't have an arrow these ports face your intake so we'll take our wrist pin throw it in the rod I'm gonna take a little bit of two-stroke oil throw it in that hole there and on the inside take our piston slide it on and then we take our wrist pin and we're just gonna slide it right on in there Now you want to make sure that wrist pin clip is seated all the way in that piston groove. You don't want those things falling out. So I'm going to go ahead and put that second piston on. Alright guys, we're getting ready to slide our cylinders on. We're going to put this base gasket on. Now the manual doesn't say anything about putting RTV or sealant on the base gasket. I didn't do it last time, but this time around Driveline Performance did recommend a little bit of RTV. So I'm going to take this spray on gasket sealant by Permatex and just put a thin coat on both sides. Now I'm going to take a little bit of our Beanol two-stroke oil and put a thin coat on the inside of my cylinder before I slide it on. Make sure you got these things with the exhaust port facing the front of the motor and we'll squeeze our rings together make sure they're lined up with the dowels and we're gonna slide our cylinder on there's one Now we're going to take our cylinder nuts and spin them on. These ones in the front can be a pain in the butt to get to, but we want to spin those things on and then we're going to snug them down to about 20 foot pounds. These ones in the front, you just got to, you know, kind of do a best guess at about 20 foot pounds. Now we're going to tighten these things down. Manual calls for 20 foot-pounds. I'm gonna put them to 21. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is put our head studs in. Now this is a step you might not have to do if you're reusing your old cylinder and you didn't have to take your studs out. Now if you got a new cylinder kit, especially if it came with brand new cylinders, not just pistons, you're probably gonna to have to do this. So it's really simple to do. We're basically just gonna thread these studs in and I'm gonna show you how to tighten them down. The one thing that you wanna make mention or make note of is there are two different size studs. There's gonna be two long ones like this one and the rest are gonna be short like this one. The two long ones, very easy. Just go in the front up here. Just remember to place them in the front. You'll have no problem at all. So how we're going to tighten these studs down, we're going to take two 12 millimeter nuts and thread them on. And then we'll tighten them together. And that's going to keep them nice and tight and it'll give us a nice um, nut up here to grab onto so we can snug these things up. 
Now I'm going to take a thin coat of anisease and put it on these studs before I tighten them down. So just make sure they're nice and snug. Now I'm gonna go ahead, put the rest of our studs in, and then we'll get to putting our head on. All right guys, my head studs are in, and I'm getting really excited about this motor now that everything's coming together. But I'm gonna call it quits here for this video because I don't want this to be too extensive. I wanna kind of break things up. This video is probably getting long as it is already. Now my next video, we're really gonna start making this motor look good. We're gonna be putting our cool head on and our billet intake, those nice shiny, polished aluminum parts are gonna make this motor really stand out and look amazing. So that, I, re I really wanna do it right now. But like I said, I wanna break this video up into segments. So I'm gonna to have to hold off on that. These are pretty simple things to do, uh, but you have to be um, you know, careful with them and take your time because the last thing you wanna do is rush and wind up having air leaks and then you gotta take your top end apart again. So that's why I wanna dedicate a video to doing that cool head and the build intake itself. Now, before I move on to advertising my Instagram page, which I know y'all love, I just wanna make mention, as I always say, guys, take your time doing this stuff. I know a lot of you guys are do-it-yourselfers. I mean, really, I'm a do-it-yourselfer. I'm not a mechanic, I never was. And you know, I'm all, this is all self-taught stuff for me. And you know, if you take your time and read the manual, you can definitely do this. You know, tools are definitely important, but you can get away with really basic tools too. And you know, as long as, like I said, you take your time, read the manual, don't force anything. That's really big with this stuff. You know, if you force these parts together, it's, you're asking for trouble. But if you take your time, ask questions on forums, have your buddies help you to have you know, experience building quads, and you, know, you can have a lot of fun building these motors and you can save a lot of money from bringing them to a dealer or a builder because you are seriously gonna pay out the ass to have a Banshee motor built or any motor built for that matter. Also guys, if you like these super clean cases, if you remember, I got them vapor blasted. I did that at dbcracing.com. If you have any quad or dirt bike and you want to get that done yourself, you can check them out, dbcracing.com. Also, guys, this top end is drivelineperformance.com. If you're interested in that, it's their 421 Assassin kit. Just wanted to make mention of them because they've been helping me out a lot with this build and it wouldn't be possible without them. So, as always, remember to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content. If you like the way I described this uh, motor build, please let me know in the comments below. If there's anything you'd like me to change, let me know that as well. I try to improve my videos as much as I can for you guys uh, to provide the best content that I can for you guys. Um, now, don't forget about my Instagram page. Most of you guys follow that. It is Michael Sabo 350 and on that channel isn't just stuff about my quads and my builds. I like to post up your guys' stuff too. If you want to send in your quad or dirt bike or project, please send it to michaelsabo350 at gmail.com or you can DM me right on Instagram. Please try to include the make, model, and year. If you have any kind of crazy modifications, let me know that too because people like to see that stuff and they want to hear what you did to your quad and also, or dirt bike. And also guys, take at least one nice picture and uh, you know, nothing cut off. You guys send these pictures in with like the wheels cut off or like, you know, Try to get one nice picture. It's cool if you have like a custom part and you want to show that off, but one nice picture for the main feature photo. Really, I appreciate that. So yeah, guys, Michael Sabo 350, please check me out. All right, I'm cutting it here. Appreciate y'all watching. I'll see you in the next one.